Welcome to another episode of the Jason and Bart Show. Look, we're Brandon now. Look at us. Look at us, all pretty and, and stuff. And you got a new haircut, so that's pretty too. I did. <laughs> and Couple totally on brand, all black <laughs> at all times. <laughs> black and yellow. We don't, to, we, can, we don't know how to do it any other way. <laughs> that's it. Whatever. How are Whatever's you, sir? I'm good, man. I'm good. How was your Thanksgiving? Uh, very quiet, which is nice. Um, you know, uh, Christmas is coming, so it's another thing. And, um, obviously for, because we do e-commerce, um, this is the shopping season. Um, sure. so for, for us, it's always been a, a very crazy time. Um, fortunately for us, it isn't as much as it used to be, um, which is nice <laughs> in the tech world. Um, but we're still busy as always. Um, how about yourself? How was your Thanksgiving? It was low key, man. It was uh, it was very low key this year, which was which was which was good. Um, but uh, yeah, I just can't believe we're already at the last day of November. I know, yeah. I know. This is where we're yeah. This this is when we're recording it. It's not going to be when the episode comes out, but we'll do it before sure. the end year. And speaking of last day of November, um, it's always a funky time for agencies right now, right? Um, between trying to sign new clients that sometimes happens or trying to resign clients or in reality, what the hell do we do right now, Jason, mm-hmm. <laughs> as an agent? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of end of the year stuff to, uh, to take care of. I mean, I think you kind of, since most agencies deal with it kind of in, in a split way, right? They're sort of the client side of end of the year chaos, brusher. We need this done before Christmas. We need this done before whatever. Um, so the production team certainly is, is dealing with a lot of, um, you know, pressure challenges that come with, with timing around this time. Also, because, you know, having access to the clients is also difficult. It's not just, right. you know, we're winding down, everybody's winding down and people are taking time off and so on and so forth. So you've got that going on. And then on the, on the business side, you know, you've got, you've got sales. Which is which is challenging always in Q4 because it is a combination of like hurry up, hurry up, we have to get this done before December 31st, and then also there's this sort of there's always this sort of gray area unknown about getting commitments beyond you know January of the following year and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of that that goes on, and then of course from a financial and ops perspective, you've got uh, it's usually. I would argue probably the big, busiest time of the year for your finance and house people is towards the end of the year, Q4, because they're also doing a dual role. They're closing the current year as we as we get further and further into Q4, but we're also doing our forecasts and our projections and getting everything tidied up and, and polished for, for 2023, right? So, um, so yeah, yeah there's a lot there's lots of cover. Yeah, let's talk about a little bit more of that. Um, I, you guys have a little bit of split stuff, right? You got finance, you got all that. As as a small company as we are, most of that is to have sales, new clients, signing last contracts, and then the financial stuff comes down to me, right? My business partner and I, but really comes down to me. It's like, what does our next week look like? What's your recommendation for sort of, I guess, agencies like mine, where we don't have that. We don't have a financial person. We don't have like that split. Yes, we have an accountant and the bookkeepers, but in reality, all the finance sort of forecasting what we do next year comes down to me and my business partner. Yeah. And, you know, I think, I think it has to be generated at that level, right? In terms of, uh, because leadership or ownership is sort of driving the bus on growth. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it tends to be in a lot of smaller companies, right? And so, you know, you guys are coming together and you're having a conversation with your partner. These owners are coming together and figuring out next year. And you're talking, you're trying to figure out within changing macroeconomic environment, maybe a changing environment on the ground in terms of labor. Um, you know, what verticals you may be concentrating on in terms of who your clients are, maybe headed for a more robust spending year and next year, maybe it's heading for a not as robust spending year next year. So a lot of that analysis in Q4, and that's usually where I recommend to people, you know, they really, obviously throughout the year, you're really trying to figure out, um, you're really trying to figure out and get clarity around what the following year and years are going to look like as best as you can. But in services, it's hard to see too far 
uh, into that into that future. Um, so I think a lot of times you, know, you start in Q4 really trying to get clarity. What I try and recommend to clients or even for, for the companies that I run, you know, by Thanksgiving, so we just wrap this up. Usually by Thanksgiving, we have both our pro- projections and forecasts are locked. Um, yeah. And then we really are spending from Thanksgiving to the end of the year, really focusing on closing out the existing year. Um, so getting to that point, figuring out what you, what you want your growth rate to, to look like. Uh, for us, obviously, we start to go through like how much revenue do we anticipate next year coming from existing clients versus how many, how much new business are we going to have to generate mm-hmm. in order to meet our, our revenue goals. Um, and that starts to trigger out, you know, we have a whole, you know, I have a whole um, sort of um, whole, so a spreadsheet for all of this stuff where we start projecting all this stuff out. Um, and it's something I share with the team. I do it based on math. So we generally pick a percentage we want to grow. And for us, you know, we're client services for the most part. So for us, it comes down to, you know, time and time and rates, you know, hours and money, right? And so how many billable hours do we expect a billable resource to work in a given year? What's the rate we're charging for those hours? This is how much revenue every employee we have can generate or should be able to generate from a math equation standpoint. Okay, so we have this revenue target. We have a per billable resource revenue target. So it's simple math. Divide this by that and you get how many resources you're going to need. If they're all fill, fully utilized, they will generate that that revenue that you're looking for. And so I usually take the team through that. I take um, the directors, all the department heads. I take the project managers, take the account managers, take everybody through it. And I go, here's the math. The math tells us this is what we should be able to do next year based on how many resources we're going to start the year off with and how much growth we're looking to. Uh, to go through next year. And I like to have, I like to have input from the people who have to go and execute against these targets. Um, because when we get into the following year, then I have sign off basically from the team that they agree these numbers are good. We agree that these numbers are mathematically feasible. It really just comes down to execution. And once we have sign off from everybody, we go sign off. And I put that in air quotes, meaning like, I want pushback. Like if I go, hey, we're going to do do completely fictional math. We did a half a million dollars this year. Next year, we want to do a million dollars. Okay. So I go to the team and I go, okay, here's what a million dollars looks like mathematically. Number of resources, number of hours, rate. All that should lead to a million dollars. And then the team goes, oh, well, we would have to hire like 100% more people in order to do that probably not a great target. It's going to be a little bit aggressive. Or in some right. cases, it's like, oh, yeah, then that, that totally makes sense. We basically have that now and, and so on and so forth. So um, that is that is at a high level how we do it. I do want to make sure the team is incorporated into the decision-making process around where our targets are and how we're projecting those forecasts out. And then, of course, we have a split of diversified revenue streams that make up that million dollars we're trying to do next year. So Let's say we want a half a million to be done through existing client work. We want a quarter million to be done on maintenance retainers, and we want a quarter million dollars of new business next year. Now, my sales and marketing team also have their forecasts set for them and their targets are set for them, right? Because they need at least a quarter million dollars of new work next year. We know what our sales cycles are. We know what our average deal sizes are. That gives them an idea of, okay, how many leads are we going to need in the door every month based on a certain conversion rate? And all the rest of it, um, and then we go from there. Right. Um, so that's a little bit of of how we generally come up with the numbers. It's not just like finger, you know, finger in the air and like, okay, well, I think ten percent growth or twenty percent growth is is the standard. I think it's a little bit more intentional um, than that for 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 our clients and and for our, for the businesses that I run. So, how about you guys? How do yeah. you how do you go about with forecasting and projecting? That less mathematical. It's more of finger, fingers throwing at the dartboard. <laughs> Sometimes, right. no, no, we we definitely do it a little. You know, not that advanced at all. Um, we're a little different just because we don't have to. Or like we kind of know. You know, we made it so flat rate on everything that you know we know how many employees we have, what that spend looks like against what we bring in because of retainer type things. So it's never. You know, 
it's it sort of doesn't really go up and down a lot. Um, right. Except for the client leaves, or you know, most of our signings now we're doing six months to a year instead of doing month to month, um, because we've been doing this for so long, we know this works, right? So that's kind of like one of those. Like it was always the the month to month was always the guarantee on the box. <laughs> you know, it's like the idea that it's like it's just there. Like if you want, that's fine, but like you still need a, a month to us to kind of check out and, and all that if you want to leave. Mm-hmm. So there's a whole bunch of those kind of triggers that's in there on purpose. Um, but sometimes that's the way we can sell. But doing the way we did, the way we do them, and they make they make the sort of easier for us to do longer term type things. Um, you know, every single thing that we're sending out like this week is all six to a year, uh, mm-hmm. which is good. Which is kind of what will set us sort of set all us down next year. Well, that's the great thing about you know your your model, right? You are you're able to control the chaos a little bit better um, in running the business. The and basically, like, like pendulum doesn't swing so much. It's it's you know, once they're in and once they're locked in for longer periods of time, it's really just rinse and repeat, which is great. Right? Yeah, I mean, we're probably leaving some money on the table in the beginning, um, but I will take that. Over, I will take that um, over not having sort of a stable sort of straight shot, right? Where we kind of know what's going to kind of happen in the next six months, at least, right? Everything signs the way we want to. We kind of know what six months look like mm-hmm. um, if we don't take anything new in, right? Yeah. And that gives us a little bit of a leverage of like, all right, what triggers can we pull in? What can we push? What can we do? And, and do those kind of things. So I think that's getting, you know, that's been good, you know, that the pandemic kind of triggered a lot of weirdness, but um, I think that's for everybody, right? You're, we're kind of all trying to recover from the weirdness that we all had. Um, you know, who's well, really smart, people, right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's really smart. You, you've you essentially productized your services, yeah. right? So that you're yeah. able to basically be able to get your MRR out for six months and, and and make your tweaks based off of a longer, the longer timeline out in the future, which is great, right? Um, mm-hmm. I think for us, same thing. I think those revenue targets kind of start to build what every department is going to have to focus on for next year. So, you know, we have a revenue target. Well, that just gave us a profit target because we want a certain amount of profitability off that revenue, right? And so for the operations folks and the project management team who are really responsible for delivering the profitability off the revenue that comes in the door, now they understand what's out in front of them. For our HR and our resourcing, right? That helps us too, because like I said earlier, in order to produce more revenue for us as a services company uh, or for services companies in general, you know, that usually means you have to hire more billable people so you can create more revenue, uh, which means you have to have more work. So this is, of course, feeding, you know, your targets of your pipeline for your marketing team, for your HR team, for your sales teams, for your production teams, your project management teams. It kind of sets the bar for, for all of it up and down. Um, and we're we're very we articulate that very well amongst the team. I think we've talked a little bit about this. Like financial literacy is one of those things that's really I think key um, to continue to focus on as as a leader, as an owner, and an operator of your agency. Continuing to teach your team uh, without making it pedantic and overwhelming for them, so that they can understand the baseline of how the business actually functions, why decisions are made a certain way. Um, by leadership, um, and yeah. especially as you come down the stretch here in Q4, you know, as we get further into December, production, you know, production tends to start to wane. I know for for crowd favorite, for example, you know, in our contracts, we actually don't, at our discretion, we can work on project work, but the weeks of Christmas and New Year's, for example, are not part of project schedules, right? So if no, you start a project work, we're close from Christmas Eve to the first Monday of whatever the new year looks like. Right. Like yeah. That, a, a lot of companies like, just shut down for, for that period of time. Nobody's going to be the clients are yeah, nobody's exactly. Nobody. Which is why we make it we make it up to us because I, it's also a great time of the year. So speaking of the production side of things too, as you come down the end of the year, like it's a great time of the year to catch up where you're behind or get ahead if you can. Right. Again, it's all at your discretion. So you may not have anybody working or in the office or whatever. Okay, great. So no work gets done. 
team gets a little break at the end of the year, you know, no worries. I think you're, if you're running finance and ops at the end of the year, I don't think you're going to get a, a, as much of a break as production will, but that's fine. I think if you have some of your team still working, you know, some people are staggered coming in and out over the, over the holidays. You know, there's an opportunity there that if you're behind on certain things, you can get caught up or you want to get ahead coming into January. There's a good opportunity to also get ahead for our clients, um, which, again, we can always which we can leverage as a great experience. Oh, look how far ahead we got. We worked through the holidays, et cetera, et cetera. Right. You kick off the new year with uh, all the extra effort and value that we put into it. Um, it's a great way to start off uh, in January, usually. So uh, but again, we don't like put that on the team. We don't put that on the team necessarily. We just uh, we just make sure that you know, if they have bandwidth and if they want to, that they can work on on clients. Yeah, definitely a lot of good you know catch up through the admin work and stuff like that. And for me, it's like gotta close the books and figure out taxes yep. and you know usual on the profit we make. Can we share that? Like all those kind of little things that you have to go through. Um, and that's a word I'm seeing a lot of this too. With like a lot of it seems like there's been this trend where a lot of work slash invoicing slash receivables have come more weighted, have come due in a more weighted fashion in Q4 than, than in earlier in the year. And I think one of the things that we're, we're working on with clients and with, with our own companies is just um, actually where, where possible, I'm trying to actually defer receivables into January at this point. Um, <laughs> lessen the tax the, burden the hard, this year. Oh, I know. It's one of the hardest. We actually had a client just randomly do an audit two years ago or something like that. And then just like, oh, we forgot to pay you all this. Here you go. And they dropped like 100 grand in yeah. December. And I was like, thank you, but no thank you at the moment. You couldn't wait till yeah. January. I'm like, I know you were doing, but now it's on our books. Good job. Um, and it, if you're not playing with a roll, it sucks. You know. Yeah. Which yeah. we talked and about. It, yeah, absolutely. I mean, even with cash, it's it's hard. It's almost like uh, the only the only saving grace that I see this year is the calendar is on our side. If, if you're if you're doing finance and ops this year, you know you could you could technically. We may delay the December first invoicing to December fifth, and since most of our clients are thirty days, um, yeah. it'll automatically make their payments due in January, which which should help us out. Even if we did bill on December first, I'm assume mo most of the receivables will come in January anyway, because due date's December thirty one. And to your point, a AP is definitely as a network the last week of the year. Mm -hmm. So no, no. Uh, uh, well, let's take a little bit of a, a little detour on like. Uh, on sort of the, the social aspect of it, you know, it's usually the time that people do the holiday parties and things yeah. like that. And in the past two years have been interesting. Um, we haven't done one. Uh, we used to do one. We used to go to actually, a, usually a Flyers game, actually, because it was the easiest one to, to, to do for us. It was always fun. Um, enough entertainment for everybody. Not everybody's into sports ball, but, um, or in this point, sports uh, puck, but it works. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, but it made sense, but in, you know, ever since the past two years, we didn't do anything and it's hard like to, to figure that out. Do you do it? Not do it? Do you not do it? You know, most of our, most of our staff now is all over the place um, because right. we have no office anymore. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that's a consistent theme. I think hybrid or remote work, even for those, you know, in the last few years who moved, who had office spaces. And even if you're getting some people back in, in person. The majority of the team is usually not together all the time. So uh, I know for us, we are doing uh, a crowd favorite. We are doing a, a holiday party. We have a monthly all hands meeting. Our December all hands will be dedicated to a holiday party. It looks like we're it looks like we're doing some kind of family feud kind of game situation, which looks fun. Uh, okay, divide, we're divided up into teams, and I don't know. I, I'm I'm not in charge, but uh, but it looks it looks like we'll have a good time. I think you know, obviously, there's opportunities at the end of the year to take stock a little bit. I usually yeah. don't burden the team with a big end of year like finance and ops report or a health check. I usually do that in January uh, when everybody's back and and, and a bit more rested. Um, yeah. I know a lot of companies this year, you know, really went to the mats. They really pushed their teams. Um, 
So I think there is an opportunity to give a little bit of a breather down the down the end of this year. Um, I know for us, doing the holiday party is great. We're also, you know, we also do a lot of um, charitable giving on a monthly basis. But in December, obviously, that gets that gets ramped up a bit. Um, and then uh, also, it's a great time of the year. You know, if you've had a successful year, maybe you're maybe you're implementing your profit sharing or your bonus program. You know, here at the end of the year, this is something else that I think. Um, can be leveraged um, and reminded to the team about, you know, we all don't work necessarily. Everybody doesn't work for more money, but certainly putting in the effort, the extra effort, rewarding your team um, and and maybe laying out what, a little bit of what next year looks like from a very positive yeah. and inspirational uh, aspect is great. Yeah, totally. Well, Jason, uh, um, yeah. I think this is going to be uh or last year for the for the season <laughs> for the year we're gonna last we're gonna episode of the that. year yeah let's let's end there because I know we're we're both gonna be a little busy with with trying to get to the holidays and then we have holidays coming up but we'll start it off again in January uh we yeah, maybe I can episode. convince you to do maybe I can convince you to do a holiday special a la a Guardians special. of the Galaxy yeah exactly uh, but uh, but you know this has been hey, a lot of fun so far. <laughs> I'm looking forward to uh, to next year for sure. I think, you know, um, we've covered some really great topics. I'm looking forward to bringing on some guests for the audience. Um, yeah, that's what we're going to uh, do in January. Yeah, I think that's, exactly. uh, that's our come plan. Back. Exactly. Exactly. Um, gonna, we got our sea legs on this one and uh, a few episodes, and then I think we're getting better at this. And then we'll. Uh, I mean, we're branded now. So that's that's really all that matters, really, at this point. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Um, but no, thank you to the audience. If there is one out there, thanks for listening. Um, you know, let us know how we can be better. And we're looking forward to coming back in January and uh, knocking this out of the ballpark next year for sure. All right, Jason. Thank you so much, buddy. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. And thanks so much for uh, making us do this coming out of uh, Owner Summit in uh, Orlando in February. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Looking forward to more. 